Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today to show you how I made my first set of cards using the August 2022 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday on my channel, I debuted the newest sheet load of cards, August 2022. Today, I'm going to show you how I made my first set. And don't forget, my team of collaborators will be joining me today and sharing a look at their first sets. To see what they have created here on YouTube, in the title and in the description box is a hashtag that you can click on and it will bring up their videos. I do have it up on screen now as well, in case you just want to do a search for that here on YouTube or over on Instagram. And speaking of Instagram, I do have team members over there as well. And if you use the link in the description box, it will take you to a search for the hashtag for this month. Now, if you're inspired to share your sheet load of cards this month, don't forget about the two hashtags at the top of the printable. I love to see what you're creating. Now, if you haven't yet seen yesterday's video and downloaded the newest printable, I do have the debut video linked in the description box below. I tell you all about how to download this for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. The August 2022 sheet load is going to yield you 12 cards if you follow the supply list and the cutting guides. So this is going to be a great one to build that card stash or maybe get started on your holiday cards. In front of me are the main supplies that I'll be using for today's cards. As I use them, I will tell you more about them. And if I add anything else, I will be sure to let you know that as well. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by cutting my 12 by 12 papers. I chose these three pieces from Craft the Clocks Flower Fiesta line. Now when you go to cut these, I'm going to cut two strips from the top that are four inches tall and then two more strips after that that are two inches tall. Because these do add up to 12 inches, you'll want to make sure not to do what I call a generous cut. You will want to make it right at that measurement or maybe even a smidge under. Once those four strips have been cut, they're going to get cut down to the final size. So those top two, I cut each piece into two pieces that are five and a quarter inches wide. For the smaller strips, I do want to make a special note that piece B gets cut to 3.625 inches wide, which is also the same as three and five eighths. That way there will be a small gap between the two pattern papers on that strip that goes across the center. To cut those first two pieces from each of the smaller strips to 3 and 5 eighths inches, you will use the mark on your cutter that is halfway between 3 and a half and 3 and 3 quarters. Once those two 3 and 5 eighths inch pieces are cut, you'll cut two more from that same strip that are one and a half inches wide. Now you have seen me put to the side some scraps from this paper and just wait to see at the end how I decorate the inside and use up almost all of those scraps. Next, I'm going to be cutting the CS1 pieces, which are 2 inches by 3 inches, but instead of using a full piece of cardstock, because this is a color I use standard, it's an off-white, I will be bringing in my little scrap bin and cutting those pieces until I have 12. 
Luckily, I did have enough in there that I just trimmed the strips down to two inches wide and cut them into three inch tall pieces. And I just kept cutting until I had 12. The next step for me was to make the little strip that goes across the center, which is CS2 on your cutting guides. And I decided for this to go with a light pink. And all you do for this is cut each piece into six pieces that are five and a quarter by two and a quarter. To do this, I cut two and a quarter strips off the top of each sheet, and I did hang on to that extra at the bottom for later. And then each of those pieces gets rotated and cut down to the final width of five and a quarter inches. And finally, you're gonna need some card bases. I know many of you already know how to do this, but just in case you're new to card making, I did want to show you what I do. I got out six pieces of craft cardstock and I cut these in half so each piece is eight and a half inches wide by five and a half inches tall. Then you can fold it in half for your card base. Or if your cardstock is a little bit heavier, you might want to use a scoring tool and there you just score it at four and a quarter first and then fold down. Either way works, you just want to end up with 12 total card bases. Now it's time to mix and match those pattern paper pieces for the little card kits. I start with the blue and then for piece B I use the wood grain and for piece C I choose the one that's left over which is the floral. Now you could keep doing the same process so all four cards look the same but for me for the next one I'm going to have a blue background with the floral on the left for piece B and the wood grain on the right for piece C. For the remaining two blue backgrounds, I do one of each in the same patterns that I just showed you. I then continue with the other two backgrounds using this same process so that in the end I will have two cards that look the same instead of four. But like always, you are free to make them all look the same if you would like to. For my sentiment today, I'm going to be using the Hey Friend Sentiment from Tailored Expressions Mod Sentiment Stamp Set, and I will be stamping that in Gina K Designs Powder Blue Ink. Now I did bring in my Misty because you know it's priceless when it comes to stamping multiples. I'm going to set that sentiment up at the bottom center of my sentiment piece, and then I can pick it up with the door of my Misty ink it up and stamp repeatedly onto each of the sheets. Now because this is a new stamp and I did want my blue a little bit darker, I did ink up and stamp each sentiment twice. While I work on the rest of that stamping, I did want to stop by with a special thank you. And that is to all of my channel members. Your monthly support keeps me creating here on YouTube and sheet load free for all. Now, if you're not yet a channel member, it does start at only $1.99 a month, and there are different levels with different perks, but the most popular one is probably the Visual Archive, and this is a file that gets updated each month and the channel members have access to. You get a little thumbnail of each sheet load of cards, and you can just click on the direct link to download. If you would like to find out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. There is a lot of white space above each of my sentiments, so I want to add a little interest or texture. So I brought in this wood grain embossing folder, and I'm just going to do a little partial embossing. So I placed my sentiment into the embossing folder and I kind of lined up the edge with the top of my letters and then put a piece of low tack painters tape on the back to hold it in place while I ran it through my die cutter. Now the first one I didn't like how it kind of stuck up in those thin lines. So for the next one, I did basically the same thing, but I put it face down or I reversed that embossing folder. And I liked the way this looked much better. 
I continued this same process until all 12 sentiments had some texture. And just so you know, you might have to play with your pressure and sandwich a little bit for your die cutter, but I think it's worth it. Next up is putting piece B and C onto that pink cardstock strip. And you will want to make note that each piece gets aligned to the outsides of that strip. So there is a little gap between the two pieces in the middle. So I start by adding adhesive to the back of my wood grain piece and align that to the left of the pink strip. Then I put adhesive on the blue and align that to the right. I set this aside with the background paper that goes with it and continued matting those smaller pattern paper pieces. Now once again, while I work on that, I do have kind of another exciting announcement and that is that some of my channel members recently celebrated one year of membership. So I wanted to take a minute here to recognize them and just give an extra special thank you for your support over the past year. Once all of those were matted, it was time to put together the card fronts. I did want to keep these nice and flat for easy economical mailing, so I just used my ATG and not any type of foam tape. Piece A or the background got centered on the card front, and then for the matted strip, I put adhesive on it and I placed it on top of that. Now I did bring in my printable to get an idea of my original intention for where that piece went, but you could always move this up or down on the card, whatever fits your needs. The remaining 11 card fronts were decorated in the same way, and I won't make you watch all of that, so let's go ahead and skip to the finished card fronts. I just love wood grain and floral together. Let me know in the comment section some of your favorite pattern combinations. Now it's time to add those sentiments. For me, I am going to go pretty much like the sketch shows, but this is one of those places that you can make the cards your own by moving that sentiment piece around or changing it up all together. I added some adhesive on the back where I thought it would match up with the strip across the center and once again I am just using ATG to make this nice and flat. You could definitely use foam tape here if you wanted for a little added dimension. I continued adding these as always until all 12 cards had a sentiment. To finish the front of the cards, I did want to add a little sparkle, so I brought in my favorite flat embellishments, my Elizabeth Craft Designs Glitter Dots. Today I'll be using the ones that have the silver outline with clear glitter in the middle. I added a couple trios of the smallest ones on the sheet to two different corners on the sentiment. I did mention earlier that I decorated the inside with some of the leftover pattern paper scraps and I just wanted to show you quick how I did one of those. You'll see here I barely have anything left for the recycle bin. Off camera I cut most of the vertical strips in half and I also cut some pieces for the inside for my sentiment that were 5 inches wide by 3 and 3 quarters inches tall. 
These are going to get adhered to the inside center. And then I'm going to put one of those pattern paper tall strips on the left. And this is actually going to get adhered so it's a little bit outside of the border. Then I'm going to take one of those flags that I punched out and adhere it aligned with that pattern paper strip, but a little bit more to the right. I did this for all 12 of the cards, and here are some close-up looks at the finished set. I hope that you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the August 2022 sheet load. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators by either clicking on the hashtag in the title to see the YouTube videos or check out that link in the description box to head on over to Instagram. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.